happy to meet you all the topic we are going to discuss today is word formation you can form words mainly by four kinds number 1 of fixing 2 blending 3 clipping and 4 you create acronyms you make acronyms so when you take a fixing there are uh, two methodologies by which you can affix one is prefixing the other one is suffixing when we talk about affixing we need to know what is affixing first of all affixing is nothing but either suffixing a word or prefixing a root so either prefixing or suffixing a root is called as affixing so an affix can either be a prefix or be a suffix so when you take prefix or a suffix these two are either derivational or inflectional in nature what is derivational and what is inflectional we'll see in detail when we handle this affixing individually then we come to blending blending is in fact the second type of uh, word formation where we are combining two words as we have seen now and uh, telex is from teleprinter exchange communication is from computer communication bionics is from biological electronics has become bionics here similarly you get modular demodulator from which you form modem mechanical electronics becomes mechatronics so you take out a portion of these two words and you make the you coin the third word by the process called blending you are combining two words together by cutting out the portion of both the words and taking the rest of the letters together this process is called as blending for the sake of easy communication we are doing it the communication language is for the sake of communication and co- the communication should be comprehensive whatever we communicate to the other person it must be comprehensive otherwise the receiver will not understand whatever we conceive in our mind for the sake of that we make it very short very easy to understand for easy understanding we have this process called blending and the third type through which we form words is called clipping clipping is nothing but you cut short the word into small the rest of the portions you forget you keep in in trend that you use a simple portion of the word a single portion of the word as you see in telephone we use only the word phone in cell phone we use the word only cell as we use the word mobile phone we don't say mobile phone every time we simply say the word mobile and we say flu i'm suffering from flu he is suffering from flu it's a fever and we don't say influenza all the time we we'll simply say flu so this when we say flu itself the other person understands better as we say cell phone we say cell mobile and uh, phone simply it's understood the fourth process by which we form words is acronyms acronym is nothing but you pick out the first letters of the scientific theory or a disease and you put all those first letters together and you spell out those letters uh, you pronounce those those letters as you pronounce a word that process is called as acronyms as you do in aids in fact so the word it is aids is not a word actually but it is formed from acquired immuno deficiency syndrome a is taken from acquired i is taken from immuno d is taken from deficiency s is taken from syndrome all these first letters put together to form the word as aids so this is an acronym so an acronym is usually it is the first letter of either a scientific concept or a disease and for the easy understanding every time you cannot tell the whole theory in detail if i say laser take the case radar and laser they look very big every time i cannot spell out the whole scientific concept so it's better i say laser and radar people understands it well as people understand it well i prefer to utter it as laser and rada so word formation you can do through four process one affixing two blending three clipping and four acronyms now we'll study affixing in detail when we come to affix we need to know what is an affix an affix is nothing but it is either a prefix or a suffix either a prefix or a suffix is called as an affix 
And a prefix is generally the phonemes that is added at the beginning of a root and a suffix is generally added at the end of the root word. The root word is nothing but the main word with which either a prefix is added or a suffix is added. So an affix is nothing but either a prefix or a suffix. So a prefix can also be called as an affix, a suffix also can be called as an affix. So when we study prefix and suffix in detail, we need to know the nature of a prefix and a suffix. Let us take an example. The word, the root here is corrode. When I want to add a suffix, I am adding corrosion. Corrosive is also possible. Corrosion is there and anti-corrosion. I am adding a prefix to it. So, I am adding anti-corrosion. Anti-corrosive material, I can say. So, anti becomes the prefix because I am adding it at the beginning of the root. So, when I add at the beginning of the root, when I add, when I add an affix at the beginning of the root, I call it as a prefix. When I do the same at the end of the root, I call it as a suffix. So, here the root is nothing but corrode, the prefix is anti and suffix is shun. The nature of a prefix and suffix when we study it in detail, we need to know that they are derivational and inflectional. Derivational means the word can be transformed into another part of speech. That is what we call as derivational. For example, S I O N ending will give you nouns. You change one part of speech into another. B E G beg is a verb. You are adding A R to it. You make it into beggar, which becomes a noun. Similarly, I am adding anti here to the word corrosion. Corrosion is noun, S I O N ending, so it is a noun. So, anti changes the meaning of the word, it gives an opposite. Here, the part of the speech is not changed by, because of the prefix. At the same time, it is not, it, it just changes the meaning of the root. So, prefixes sometimes change the meaning of the root. Some prefixes like em in embody, take the word embody, take the word, take the prefix en as you see in n circle. So, circle, it is a circle we say, it is a noun, body, it is a noun. So, noun changed into a verb. Some prefixes like this also change one part of speech into another part of speech. So, we can also call prefix as derivational. Prefix is both derivational and inflectional in nature. There are some prefixes that are derivational in nature. Most of the prefixes don't change the, they don't change the root, I mean part of speech, but there are some prefixes that change the part of speech. They convert one part of speech into another. Here a noun changes into a verb. Here again noun changes into a verb. So the prefixes, these prefixes are are to be concentrated. Then when we take suffixes, suffixes are derivational, they change one part of speech into another part of speech. Derivational is nothing but change of one part of speech into another part of speech. A noun becoming a verb, a verb becoming a noun, a noun becoming an adjective, a verb becoming an adjective, a verb becoming an adverb. So changing all these things by suffixing, by adding the suffixes at the end of the root do you do it. So, you call such kind of transformation as derivation. So, you derive one word from the other, one part of speech from the other part of speech. So, you call it as derivational in nature. And you have inflectional suffixes also. For example, when you use third person singular in simple present tense, you have to add yes along with the verb we say. There the meaning of the verb never changes, but the s is added just to say the, sen the sentence is grammatically correct. So, when you have third person singular subject, you in simple present tense, you are adding an additional yes. The yes never converts that particular word into any other part of speech. The word remains a verb. At the same time, the meaning also does not change. But for the grammatical, 
for the grammatical satisfaction, for the grammatical logic, for the grammatical satisfaction of the rule, we add an additional s and uh, that kind of addition and sometimes we add ed to change it into past tense. The verb exists as verb but only the tense changes. So such additions which does not derive any other part of speech and which will not affect the meaning also, meaning of the word but only show the tense, only for the grammatical purpose they are added. So when words are suffixed only for the grammatical purpose when they don't change the part of speech, they are called inflectional in nature. It is possible for both the prefixing and suffixing. When we take prefix, as we have seen already, they, with the help of prefix, we form antonyms or we coin antonyms and with the, we also change one part of speech into another. Let's take uh, the prefixes like this, ill, anti and non. I have given you some of the examples here. If you take this, as you see in this agree, it gives the antonym. I have given examples for the prefixes that give antonyms. We are, we are dealing with only uh, uh, only this uh, ill, anti and only a very few prefixes like this. Sometimes we are in a notion that uh, A will not give us uh, uh, an opposite or an antonym, but A do give us uh, opposites as you see in apolitical, amoral and asynchronous. That is why I have given you Symmetric, asymmetric we say. There are many uh, uh, antonyms that could be formed with the help of prefixing with the alphabet A. This is possible. Most of us think that A will not give antonyms, but A do give antonyms. Then, uh, miss, you, you know all these prefixes. Irregular you say, ir I haven't given here. There are several prefixes. I have uh, dealt only a very few pre prefixes here. This, ill, anti, non, miss and A. Illegal anti-corrosion and non-combustion. So, these are the prefixes that help to form antonyms because just to state some examples, I have given you some examples and you have a very, uh, very many prefixes that give antonyms. Now, when you say how it changes into one part of speech into another, uh, we have seen an example already with the help of n-circle, embolden. Uh, so, whenever you try a uh, word by prefixing n, wherever e n prefixing is possible, probably it will give, uh, it will convert a noun form into a verb form. Similarly, for m, if you want to embody, I said, I, gave, I stated that example prior, if you want to say embolden, bolden, embolden, it changes the uh, part of speech, n circle. Circle is a noun, n-circle, n-circle the n 